And today we're playing with pigs, baby back barbecued pork ribs. We're gonna smoke them, we're gonna grill them up, we're gonna slather them with bourbon barbecue sauce. That's right, and boys, I know you think you know everything about barbecues, but today I'm gonna give you a little help. I've got a barbecue expert with me in the backyard today, giving you tips on how to choose the perfect grill so that you don't butcher John's recipes um, worse than they already are. To the grill. Talking to me? Are you talking to me? I don't see anybody else here. You must be talking to me. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We're doing New York style barbecue today. Okay, what we got here is we got our baby back ribs. And over here, these are our further back ribs, okay? We're gonna get right on with this. What is barbecue? You probably think you know what barbecue is, but you probably don't, okay? The deal is, barbecuing and grilling are two separate things. Barbecuing involves smoking, long protracted cooking. Grilling is throwing it on a grill. So what we're doing today is barbecuing. We're doing Memphis style ribs, Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City style ribs, okay? And uh, both of these are done in varying manners. Kansas City style ribs, Kansas City style titties, what they're done with is a very wet sauce. You want a lot of sauce on your breasts, okay? And the Memphis style ribs are done in a dry method of cooking. Both done the same way on the grill, basically, with the exception that the Kansas City has been basted with a nice sauce and finished off with a table sauce, okay? What we have to do first is think about our side dish. What's gonna take longer in this meal than other things? And the first thing is these big sweet potatoes here. We're gonna parboil these, okay? We're gonna throw them in some cold water. Good rule of thumb is any vegetable you're taking out of the ground goes into cold water and is brought up to temperature. So we're gonna pop these in here. Take this one too, because as I said before, most good things come in pairs. <laughs> we're gonna start making our sauce here. This is a bourbon barbecue sauce. This is going to the Kansas style city ribs, okay? Let's throw in some bourbon here. We want bourbon. We want scotch. We got deer. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce this down by a bit. And I'm gonna walk over here. I'm just gonna come around here. His job is to make me look good regardless of what I'm doing. And I don't feel that this relationship is working out, okay? Let's take a look in the pot here. Our bourbon's starting to boil. We don't wanna take this down or up too hot. If it flames, we're gonna be burning off all the sugar and that's where the flavor is at. Okay, when this reduces down, we're gonna have a really nice grainy, mushroomy, sweet kind of reduction happening. And then we're gonna add the rest of our stuff to this. Okay, while we're doing this, let's get down our back ribs. Okay, what do you think of these? These come from the back of the animal, that's why they're called back ribs. Occasionally you get front ribs, but they're not nearly as good. Okay, there's no such thing as front ribs, but you know. You could believe me for a second though, didn't you? Okay, I want to tell you a little story about the time I was uh, in love with a pig. <laughs> Well, moving on down to the wood chips here. This is our smoking element in the barbecue experience, okay? What we have is mesquite chips here. This is a type of wood common to the southern United States. It's very, very aromatic. It smells incredible. You know, you could line your sock drawer with this, but you'd probably look like a freaking idiot, okay? But stick to the cedar, guys. Wood chips are for smoking, okay? We can also use things like cherry, alder, ash, birch. They all make nice smoking. But if you got some fruit wood, let's smoke some pigs, okay? This is reducing nicely now. It's down by about a half, just needs to go a little bit further. Okay, I'm gonna get together the rest of the ingredients for this. We're gonna have some ketchup. Any brand will do, it's all basically the same stuff. Tomatoes and a lot of other things that you're not terribly interested in. We got some cider vinegar, that's about a cup. We got blackstrap molasses. This stuff is great. It's the beginnings of a fantastic rum. We got some garlic. Get the rest of that in there. And some dry mustard. We're gonna whisk this up, okay? Otherwise, the mustard's just gonna clump on the top. 
That mustard's dissolving nicely. We're gonna let this sit here for about 20 minutes at a high heat, okay? This is gonna roll down, reduce down by about at least a half. It's gonna be a nice saucy consistency that's gonna stick, gonna stick to our ribs. Okay, we're out of here. Come on back very soon, because we're barbecuing. The old barbecue is not gonna last forever. One day, she's gonna blow. We've got Miles here today. He's our resident barbecue expert. He's gonna talk a little bit about a kettle grill, a little bit about a hibachi, and a regular barbecue. So we'll see which one's right for you. It's all about the meat. Okay guys, we're back doing our seven style barbecue. We're getting closer to the barbecue in point. Come on over here, take a look at this. Our sauce is getting a nice consistency. Another two or three minutes, this is gonna stick to the ribs, no problem. And later on, the ribs are gonna stick to your ribs. So let's get cracking, okay? We've got our sweet potatoes happening here. Okay, these have been on for about 15 or 20 minutes. They're big sweet potatoes, they take a while to cook. I'm just gonna check this out here. Okay, these are about halfway cooked, which is exactly what we want, because we're gonna take them off and we're gonna finish them off on the grill a little later on. Okay, be careful. Do not burn yourself. Make sure you have a good grip on them. Straight in there. Also, reaching over the pot isn't such a sharp idea either because there's a lot of steam here. You could burn yourself. But real men don't worry about burns. We're gonna get straight into our Kansas style marinade. This is the same style of rib that we're gonna put the sauce on, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna marinate these ribs up. We're gonna loosen up all that muscle fiber. Cut them in half. We're not gonna separate each rib because if you do that, there's more surface area exposed to the heat and it's gonna dry out. This way, all you have drying out is the perimeter of the ribs, okay? In between, it's gonna be fantastically juicy, okay? Get these into the bowl. This is cider vinegar. This is going straight in. Need a couple of lemons, just the juice. If you don't have a juicer, we can use a fork, okay? Slide the fork straight in, squeeze it, and twist. Don't worry about the seeds, the seeds are gonna come out. We all like the citrus zip. Okay, this is the last. Okay, and then just a pinch of salt, okay? Right in there. Toss them around a bit. Let these sit for about half an hour before you put your barbecue sauce and it's gonna be really tasty and tender. What we're gonna do with our Memphis style ribs, because it's a dry rib, we're just gonna make a spiced rub for this. And this is really simple, guys. What we need is a little bit of celery salt, we won't add any more salt later on because there's enough salt content in this to season our ribs. We got some dried thyme, about a tablespoon. We got lots of black pepper. We got about a quarter of a cup almost here because we like it hot. Bunch of paprika, quarter of a cup as well. This is the hot paprika we're using as well. This is some garlic powder. We got some onion salt, or pardon me, onion powder. A little bit of cayenne or chili. We got some mace. And we got nutmeg. This is the nut of nutmeg. If you grind up about three or four tablespoons of it, you can get really high if you ingest it. But the funny thing is, is that the dosage for getting high is just a little bit lower than the dosage for coma. Hey, you decide. So we're gonna add our mace. We're gonna add our nutmeg. That's really nice. That's a lot of nutmeg. That's gonna be quite strong, but I think we're mad enough to take that, aren't we? Okay, a little bit of salt. We're gonna mix this up. Before we rub down our meat, that's right, you heard that right. Before we rub down our meat, we're gonna reserve about four tablespoons of this. We're gonna put it into our cider vinegar, and this is gonna be our sauce, our basting sauce for these ribs. They're a dry rib, but we still need to keep them moist in the barbecue, okay? It's not like a barbecue sauce we're putting on, it's just a moistening agent. Okay, that's enough of that there. Let's rub our meat, shall we? You wanna lay out your ribs like this, and we're gonna do this twice. Once right now, and once in about half an hour when these get going on the grill. The reason we do this is that the first application is gonna get further into the meat, start loosening it up. The second application is just gonna sort of put a crusty exterior on it. Adding a lot of flavor as well. Man, if you could smell this, this is so pungent, man. It's gonna be great. Flip them over. 
We're seasoning the back of these ribs, even though there's not a lot of meat there, because we're not using knives and forks. No, man. What we're doing is we're picking these ribs up, we're chewing on the bone, we're sucking off every little bit of meat that is found on these ribs, right? They've been doing this since caveman days. Find a pig, wild pig, throw it on the fire, pull it off, pick it up in your hands, tear into the meat, man. It's good, it's greasy, and it's a lot of fun. Come on back, because we're grilling some barbecue. All right, listen up, boys. Miles has got a couple tips for you so that you don't look like an idiot next time you go buy a barbecue. So the first unit that we're going to be looking at here is your standard propane grill. This fancy one we've got here, it's got the metal heat distributing rocks instead of the old-fashioned lava rocks. Up here, we've got a little basket for grilling vegetables so you don't actually have to sear them and get them stuck right down here on the grill. And then a higher level for meats that you've already cooked, you can set those up off the grill and keep them warm. Over to the side here, We've got a little side burner for doing sauces or marinades, whatever, corn, rice, anything else. You can do the whole meal out in the backyard on a fancy unit like this. Electric starter. This thing, every time you turn it, a little, a little shock, a little spark jumps between a contact point and the uh, burner assembly, lights the propane. So you don't have to be in there with matches trying to set yourself on fire. A lot simpler than, than some messing around you might have to do with other types of units. Lots of space here over on the side for putting your condiments and hanging your little tools here, bottles and stuff like that, so you don't have to be running in and out of the kitchen all day long just getting stuff. You can, you can do your whole meal out here, basically. And um, it's really nice because you don't have to be running in the house and outside of the house getting everything ready. You got the whole deal right here and you can stay outside and enjoy the sunshine with the rest of the party. From Hamburg to Yorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot Ready. The first Weber kettle grill was actually made from a buoy and what happened was an employee at the Weber Nautical Buoy Company wanted a grill that was a little bit larger than he could find at that point in time. So he took a buoy, sliced her in half, threw some coals in, slapped a grill on top and thus the Weber kettle grill was born. This is a charcoal grill similar to the hibachi over here but a little nicer. You've got the lid here, it keeps the heat in, lets you uh, cook things a little bit faster. Down in the bottom go the coals on that grill. And one of the things that this lets you do is you don't have to be lugging ashes all over the place. They all just collect in the pot here, so you don't have to be dumping it out like the hibachi every single time. You just take this pot off and go dump it. Very nice to work with. Okay, and the last unit we're dealing with here is your age-old hibachi. Very, very simple. You can usually pick one of these up for about less than 20 bucks, actually. You can use them anywhere. Very simple to assemble. Weigh nothing. You can cook just about anything on them. They're not that big though, so if you're looking for bigger meals, you've got to go to one of the other bigger units here. Quick tip on using the hibachi, when you're lighting the coals on fire, put them in a little pile here and then the, the heat and the fire can spread through them more quickly and then when you're ready to cook on them, just spread them out and let the heat come up more distributed. These little hibachis are great for you urban grillers who have a little lack of space, but no grilling in the bedroom. Take it from me, when your lady says she wants to get cooking under the sheets, it doesn't involve a hibachi. Okay guys, we're at the grill now, and we're getting ready to smoke these babies, okay? This is a very important element to the barbecue. After all, barbecuing is not just grilling, it is a combination of grilling and smoking very slowly. What we have here, we have the mesquite chips that I showed you earlier. I've soaked these in water for about two hours. Just so they're impregnated enough, they're not going to catch fire really quickly and burn too fast. We want a slow smoke over the entire cooking process, or at least for as long as they will give off the smoke. You know, it's going to be half an hour, an hour at least. And then we're going to cook them for at least two hours, okay? The best way to do this is, let's put these inside of a foil envelope. The reason we're doing this is because we don't want these things going down and clogging up the coals and uh, making a mess inside your barbecue. It's a very controlled way of doing this. Okay, got these in, fold one side over, the next side over, just make your basic envelope. Make sure it's fairly tight there, pop it over and poke some holes. This is going to allow the smoke to escape. We don't want to have too big a hole because it's going to come out too fast. We just want it to percolate with smoke. Okay, step over here to the grill. We've got a grill lifter. This is a very handy invention. Turn it sideways, lift this up, and throw this on. Okay, we're going to close this down. This is on fairly high heat right now. We're going to have to turn this down in a little bit. Otherwise, our ribs are going to cook too fast and they're going to be tough. It's going to have a harsh smoke flavor. We don't want that. While we're waiting for our coals to ignite, I think what we should do is we should take out our Memphis style ribs again, lay them out here. These are the dry ribs that we're doing. And we're going to re-rub them because it's been at least half an hour. 
and these are just for ready to go. A little bit more spice rub, and this is the part of the rub that's going to make everything nice and crusty. And we like it crusty. Turn them over, get the backs again, because we're gnawing on these puppies. Okay, let's take a look at our Kansas City style ribs. Okay, these have been sitting in the marinade for at least half an hour, and you can tell the meat is getting a little bit milky in color. That means the acid is reacting with the meat fibers. Okay, very, very soft, a lot softer than it was a half an hour ago. We're gonna put these babies out here, we're gonna get a little bit of grease on them. Yeah, a little bit of veg oil. Okay, and a little bit of coarse salt. We're getting some smoke coming up from here. This is great, a little bit of flame, that's okay, that's gonna die down in a second. We've just turned the heat down on this, it's time to get our ribs a cooking. Okay, we're gonna lay these out lengthwise. It's easier if they're all in the same direction for turning. We're putting these bone side down, okay? Because the bones can take most of the heat and the meat on top is gonna to cook a lot more slowly. We're gonna be cooking at about 250 degrees. It's gonna take at least two hours for these things to finish. So you better be patient. You better have a well-stocked cooler. Okay. These are our Kansas City style ribs. Putting these on, we're gonna get the marinade on them right away. This is actually what they call a mopping sauce because we're mopping it on. Those look good, don't they? What do you think, Wade? Oh, yeah. You want to try these a little later on? Oh, yeah. Okay. You play your card right, make me look good, and we'll be okay. Uh, tough job, man. <laughs> I know it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Okay. Let's close this down. Earlier on, I promised some grilled sweet potatoes, but you know. I'm more into the sort of homespun, fly by the seat of your pants method of cooking. So, what do you say we do some mashed sweet potatoes? How's that sound? Pretty good? good. Okay. A couple sweet potatoes. Should we peel them? No. Uh, no, 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 no. The skin's where all the nutrients are at, right? So, let's get mashing, baby. Play ball. Ed Griffey Jr., eat your heart out. Mashed potatoes. I think Melissa's got a little something up her sleeve. She's gonna come back, she's gonna show us how it's all done. It's all about the meat. <laughs> it's all about smoking, okay? We're back to the grill. And these puppies are looking fantastic. I'm just about to start basting these. Uh, no, I don't think you are. I think you should move over and machismo. And uh, I'm going to finish these. I think I know a little bit more about barbecuing than you now. Teach me a lesson, darling. Well, I'm going to base these baby up. You know where this, that's going? Yes, I do. Okay. This is a mopping sauce. And don't think you're going to catch me mopping ever again on this show. I'm not your little housewife, Johnny. But I'm going to mop these up for you just to show you how a real rib is seasoned. That's so a good start. So okay. we're going to sop and mop these up. Not bad technique. All right, make sure you get everything. And I like them really saucy. These ones are supposed to be dry, but hey, we're going to add lots of more sauce on. I knew it. And this is the wet sauce. I like the wet ones. What do you like? I prefer it a little bit drier. You like it drier, OK. Well, I like to get wet and sticky when I'm eating ribs and so that you can lick your fingers and lick all the sauce off. But you know what? Memphis-style ribs actually began because of a finicky eater in Memphis. Did you know that? I did not know that. What happened was there was a customer that went into a Memphis rib joint, and he didn't want to get his fingers all sticky, and he didn't like licking them off and all that stuff like we like to do. So he asked for the waiter to bring him some dry ribs. So the waiter went in. The chef mixed up a little uh, rub, rubbed the pork with it, and then we have Memphis-style ribs. That's how it all happened. That's how it all happened. So I'm going to keep finishing these off, and you go ahead and make the salad. Because that's what men do. Men don't like barbecue, men like the salad, don't we? We're all watching our figures, guys. And being that it's bathing suit season, let's make a light salad, light refreshing summer salad while my husband gets busy here. That's right, I wear the pants in this kitchen. That's okay. We got a little bit of uh, acid going on here. Don't take the brown acid, dude, it's bad. Okay, okay, that's for all you hippies out there, though. You know, chances are you don't have a TV anyway, so that's a joke wasted on everybody. Okay, we got a little bit of red wine vinegar. 
got a little bit of garlic. We got some thyme. Nothing but thyme. Okay, and we got a little bit of mustard here. This is what's gonna pull the whole thing together. The mustard and the acid, they're gonna allow the fat molecules to mix up with the acidic molecules and the seasonings. And we're gonna have a really cohesive, emulsified vinaigrette, as they say. But meanwhile, basting beauty. When you're done that, you gotta make sure that you close down the lid, right? We still got a little bit of smoke and action left to do there. All right, well, right? these babies are all slathered up and ready to go. Okay, well, I'm gonna start adding the oil to this. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Emulsification Theater. When you're doing this, you add it slowly and whisk rapidly, okay? Do you like a slow whisk or a fast whisk? I like a fast whisk. Okay, well that's what we got. You see how that's pulling together? Okay, what do you say we chop up a little bit of veg, we get the salad happening. Sounds great. And how, how are those ribs doing? They're doing pretty good, I'm just keeping them warm for you. Okay, I'm just gonna chop up a little bit of sweet chili pepper. Got a little salad action there. Got a little bit of green pepper. This is a salad just for two. Would you like them all or is that too much meat for you to handle? I don't need to handle the meat. <laughs> Why don't we serve them all up? Okay. We got some tomatoes. Oh man, those do look good. We've got some dry ones for the finicky eaters and we've got some spicy, hot, Saucy ones for John and I. Guys, if you could smell these, you'd be salivating as much as I am. See? Uh... Okay, let's dress the salad, and we're ready to go. You know, John, I'm a little confused about something. Hmm? I thought you were making some sweet potatoes to go with them. That's Thanks my favorite dish. Me. I prepared these especially for you. Oh, really? Great. I slaved over these, and these are some swinging potatoes. Check them out. We're red hot and ready. The home of smoky goodies. <laughs> 